What's going on guys? It's King Tuts Pro. Welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In today's video, I want to show you this amazing liquid explosion transition. Now this video is inspired and credited to Brian Delamata, so shout out to him. Go follow him, subscribe to his YouTube channel, and follow him on Instagram. Really cool guy. Amazing, amazing effects that he puts out. In today's video, I want to show you how to recreate the liquid explosion transition in Final Cut Pro without having to use any plugins at all. And this is 100% free. With that being said, if you guys go down in the description as well, you guys can go ahead and visit my website, kingtutspro.com, where I do have my own editing packs if you guys just want to skip the entire process of editing. So this is the original video here from the Wotionist Media channel. Ideally, you want to have a scene where you have your objects, in this case, this Porsche 911, absolutely beautiful car. But what you wanna do is make sure that you have your subject relatively still. It'll just make the masking process so, so much easier. I'm gonna go about here. I'm gonna press Command B to split the clip and I'm gonna go all the way to the end here. So right there. I'm using the left and right arrow keys, by the way, to go frame by frame. And then I'm gonna press Command B again to split the clip. And I'm gonna rename this so you guys don't get confused because we are gonna be making a lot of copies of the original clip here. So I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna just rename this clip to background. So now what we wanna do is hold Option on your keyboard and then just drag upwards, just drag it directly above. And now we're gonna rename this clip to something else just to stay organized. Or I'm gonna name this top mask, I guess. And we're gonna be adding a mask onto this because we want to, of course, make our selection of this Porsche here. So we're gonna go over to the effects. We're gonna go down to the masks and we're gonna add the draw mask. Click and drag this onto the top clip there. And then now it's going to say, click to add a control point. I'm gonna just move this to the very beginning. And if you need to go ahead and zoom in to like 100 or you know like 200 to get a really precise selection the more points you add on your subject the more work you're gonna have to do so how can we kind of find a, like the best of both worlds is to really make as few points as possible so what you want to do is start somewhere like right here just click and drag to make a curve click and drag and i'm going to try and use as few points as possible so like instead of adding like a bunch right here like doing this that will just take a long time. So it'll come out a lot better, but you're gonna have to do a little bit more work. So I'm gonna go like here, maybe like this. And then when you're ready, you're gonna click the first point. You're gonna see the pen tool with a little circle next to it. Just click on that. This will finish the path. Now we can go ahead and go to the inspector window there. Click on the draw mask. Make sure the playhead is at the beginning. And now we're gonna click on control points, add a keyframe there. Open up transform and add a keyframe to everything. So add a keyframe next to position, rotation, scale. And then what you can do is I'm gonna zoom out here to like 100 and I'm gonna skip every 10 frames because this video is not, I mean, it's relatively smooth. There's not too much movement going on, so we can skip some frames. However, if there's a lot of movement, you're gonna have to go frame by frame and move these points individually, which I know it sucks, but that's really the only way to get this effect to look really good. So I'm gonna hold shift and press right on the arrow key and this will skip 10 frames. Then what I can do is click in the middle of this mask because we've already added a keyframe next to the position here, don't add one now, but this will allow us to, when you click and drag, you're gonna see it automatically adds a keyframe. And now we can just go to scale also and just bring this down. This way we don't have to move each of these points individually. If you need to move them, do it now because if you do it later, it's just gonna mess up the whole entire mask. So again, hold shift, press right on the arrow key. And because it does move away from the camera, the mask is going to stay the same size. So we need to bring the scale down very gradually. So we can just do that by clicking and dragging on this or using the slider and then kind of repositioning this. And then if you need to, or if you want to select multiple points, if you click and drag, this will allow you to select all of those anchor points. So this just makes the process so much easier. Okay, and then again, hold shift, press right on the arrow key. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see a little bit better of what's going on. And I'm gonna select all of those points again, click and drag like so. Again here, I'm gonna click and drag just to move it like that. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up for you guys so you don't get bored with this.
All right, guys, so I just finished the selection here. So now if I go back, you're gonna see if you really spend some time with this, it'll look just like this. If we disable the bottom clip temporarily by pressing V, you should just be able to see the car by itself or whatever you chose to mask out. So now that we have this, we're gonna make a copy, hold option and drag upwards again and then let go. We're gonna rename the middle clip to liquid if I can type. So this way we just stay organized so we know which clip is which and in case we need to go back and you know fix it. Now that we have that we're gonna go over to the effects. We're gonna go to distortion. In the distortion tab you're gonna go down to underwater. Click and drag that onto that uh, clip here. You're gonna notice now it's being uh, kind of beneath our mask that we just made. So if I push play it'll look something like this but we need to make further adjustments. So under the underwater effect, we're going to add some keyframes. So first make your, the size here, we're going to make this pretty small. So we're going to make this to like 0 0.4. The speed is how fast this is going to be. So if you want to have more of a slower effect, just bring it down. Uh, maybe even 40 could look kind of cool. The refraction here, let's see what this looks like. So if we increase it to 200, this will just create more of these kind of uh, liquidy effects. If we bring this down, it'll just go away. So this is very important. We're going to bring this all the way to 200 for now. So it'll look like this. And then the mix is just really the opacity. We're not going to really mess with this. So once you're happy with the results, you're going to go to the beginning and then you're going to add a keyframe to all of them here. You don't need to add one to mix. I think that's fine. And then what you're going to do is since you're at the beginning here, you're going to hold shift and press right on the arrow key to skip 10 frames. Now this is if you wanted to start right away. Uh, you don't have to start it right away. You can start it at 10 frames and then add the keyframes but I'm gonna add it right here at the very beginning. So at this 10th keyframe, we're gonna go to the size here and you can either bring this all the way up or all the way to 10. And then the refraction, we're gonna bring this back to zero. So now if we kind of push play, it'll look like this. Now this is kind of going crazy. So we're gonna right click on this video, go to show video animation, and you're gonna see under the underwater speed, that there's a keyframe right here. Now, depending how long you want this effect to last, this is 10 frames, so that's really short. So I'm gonna press Command Z to undo those. So I'm gonna make this at 20 frames. So I'm gonna hold Shift again and press right on the arrow key, and this will go to 20 frames. Here, I'm gonna go and bring the size to 10, and then the refraction to uh, zero. Feel free to experiment with this. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly how I have it. If I go back here and I push play at the beginning, it'll look kind of like this. For the size, I might want to bring this down actually to 0 0.4. Let's just see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So for size, we don't really need to change that. I think the refraction is what we really are looking for. So it's going to start off like this and it's going to last for 20 frames. Or if you think you don't want it to be 20 frames long or you want it to be a little slower of an effect, what you can do is go to the, say you're right here, just go and click this next arrow to go to this 20th frame and then remove the keyframe next to refraction. So then you can just now go to like maybe here and then bring the refraction down to zero. So this will make the effects last longer. So now if I go back and push play, it'll look just like that, super smooth. Once it ends, which is about here, I'm going to, I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna press Command B to split the clip. Do the same thing for the top mask clip, press Command B, and then you can delete those two because we don't need them anymore. Now that we have this effect, it'll look like this. You can stop at this point, but I think we can really make this a lot more sexy. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is, with the liquid effects selected, hold option, drag upwards again, and then let go. Make sure that this one is in between the top mask and the liquid effect. I'm gonna rename this one now to glow. We're gonna be adding a glow effect to this. So we're gonna go to the effects. You're gonna go up to blur, add a Gaussian blur to the glow clip. Now you're gonna be like, whoa, what does this do? So this actually just blurs the video so that it almost looks like it's glowing, which is actually pretty cool. So now if we go over to the color tab here, which should look like this if you're on the newest version, if you're on the older version of Final Cut Pro 10, it'll probably just be like color board or something. It might look like a circle. Anyways, what you wanna do 
is go to the color tab here. You don't have to add a color board or any of these corrections unless you're gonna be adding keyframes. And we're gonna change the color for global to match that green or any other color. So I'm gonna go like here, if I push play, it'll go with the mask as well because it's also affecting the mask. So what we're gonna do is select the backgrounds clip, okay, and move the playhead at the very beginning. And then you're gonna go up at the top, go to edit, and you go down to add freeze frame. And then now it's going to add a still image as you can see. So just click and drag this one to the left here. And then if you need to, just trim it like this, okay. Now this here does matter because you wanna make sure this ends exactly where this frame is. So we, it kind of pushed it a little bit, so we're just gonna select these three clips and drag it over because we need to make sure it's matching exactly. And then drag this one over one frame like that, perfect. So it should look like this. There shouldn't be any jumps or nothing like that. If it is, you might need to adjust the positioning of these clips. But this is perfect here, so I'm gonna zoom out. The freeze frame here is just how long you want this effect to last on the previous clip. So I think this is fine, like around here. Once you've done that, we're gonna go over to the effects and we're gonna go back to the masks and then add the draw mask onto the freeze frame clip here. All you're gonna do is just make a selection. This one will be a lot easier because you don't have to worry about the clip moving. It's just a still image. So you can either do this in Photoshop if you have Photoshop or any other editing application uh, to pretty much cut out your subject. So we can do it in Final Cut Pro just to keep things simple. And here you can get as precise as possible. To move around, just click this little pan window here. And this will allow you to kind of move around the video if you need to. Just get it as close as you can. Okay, perfect. Now, if you go back, it should look something like this, okay? We need to kind of animate this, so the easiest way is by going to this transform tool. If you click the down arrow and you go to crop, this will show you the three options, trim, crop, and Ken Burns. We're gonna click Ken Burns, and we're gonna go to the beginning, the end here. Make sure that this is the same scale as uh, this frame window. What you can do is just click on one of these corners, hold option at the same time, and click and drag and then make sure that this matches this because if it doesn't, it will change the scale and kind of mess up the um, the scaling. So we're gonna go to crop here again and then the end point, we wanna, we wanna make sure that's there. But the start, I'm gonna drag this one over here and then move this the end point back to where it was, so right there. If I zoom out here so you guys can see what's going on. The green, this is the starting point. So what this will do is it will go from the left side to the middle here. It's kind of the opposite pretty much. So it should look something like this. You can do it like this or in the bottom or like this. It doesn't really matter, but just make sure that the endpoint is fitting this entire window. This is really what matters the most. So then click done. Now if I go back and push play, it's going to look like this. We need to make this look a little bit more realistic. So we're gonna go to the effects, we're gonna go to blur, and we're gonna add a directional blur onto the freeze frame. So add that there. Depending how fast this is going, you might need to adjust the amount. So click and drag this so like if it's going really fast, you're gonna have to really bring this up. So 127 or something. And then once it's around here, like maybe five frames. So one, two, three, four, five. Five frames from the end, we're gonna add a keyframe next to amount. And then at the end, we're gonna bring the amount to zero. So now this will gradually go away like this. So now if I push play, it's gonna look like this. And then now the last and final thing we can add to kind of make it a little bit more unique, I guess, is to go to the glow effect. So just go to light and then glow and just add that onto the freeze frame clip and add that onto the top mask. And then now your effect is finished. If you go back here and we push play, this is the final effect. So, so clean. And again, shout out to Brian De La Mata for this amazing concept. But if you guys did find this tutorial helpful, if you guys could smash the like button, that would be amazing. If you guys just want to skip the whole entire editing process and just want to get down to the nitty gritty, then just go to my website. I have a bunch of editing packs available for you guys to purchase. And there's some free ones as well if you guys want to try them out. But it just helps out the channel as well. So with that being said, I'll catch you next time.